walls fall face down on the floor all to echo holy is the lord my heart can't help but sing with all of heaven roar forever echo holy is the lord today. We have a couple of people absent um, due to COVID, and uh, so things are going to be a little bit different today, but uh, if you could bear with us and sing as, as best you can.
that great hymn, Crown Him With Many Crowns. morning. Everybody good? How many of you are freezing? All right. Florida is not supposed to be like this, man, uh, but you got to love it. Guess what happened this morning in the Redford house? 3.30. Everybody's sleeping. We were sleeping good too, Levada. It was nice. We were we were sound asleep. Sawyer starts crying and he's having a hard time. We ended up both going in there and uh, as we're in there, the power flickered. And I thought, well, that's weird because the lines can't be frozen. It's not freezing. And the power went out. And the power is still out at our house. And it was really cold last night uh, in the house. But uh, I was not expecting that at all. It got really, really chilly. So we got dressed at church today. And it was a lot warmer here. And uh, we uh, are excited to be here today. If we're a little... Um, if we're a little cognitively slow, it's because our brains are frozen, okay? But we're glad you're here today. Hey, listen, we're going to have a great day today. If you're a guest, by the way, uh, we are so thankful. Mark, you look adorable right there. You just look absolutely adorable there. Everybody look at Mark right here. Look at, he is freezing right over there. Uh, well, I'll get somebody to come sit next to you and help you out there. Scott, you're going to have to move back next to <laughs> Man, um, we're going to have a great day. If you're a guest, you're thinking, what in the world is happening right now? Uh, we love Jesus, and we like to have fun, and we believe you can do both. Amen? Amen. Uh, but we're glad that you're here today. Today's a special day. It is the fifth Sunday of the month, so we're going to have a fellowship after the service. Normally, we do them in the evening, but it's going to be really cold this evening, and so we're doing it right after the morning service. And and so we invite you to stay, stick around with us. Uh, we're going to be grilling hot dogs and hamburgers, a bunch of sides. Uh, and we're going to have a cornhole tournament. It's going to be awesome. We're going to have an indoor cornhole tournament. And so after the service, we're going to stack up the chairs on the side and we're going to play cornhole and uh, may the best team win. Uh, my wife has been talking smack to me. <laughs> she said that she recruited a superhero to play with her, and she and Mari evidently are planning on wiping the slate with everybody else. And so, listen, if you have a teammate, you can sign up after the service with your teammate. If you say, well, I don't have a teammate, I didn't recruit anybody, I'm feeling a little shy, whatever it is, you can sign up that you need a teammate, and I'll pair you with somebody. And listen, we're going to have a great time. It's going to be awesome. Uh, we're going to eat together, fellowship together. Uh, you say, 
saying, well, I don't play cornhole. If you want to watch, we're going to have an audience set up and you can come and sit here and watch the cornhole tournament. And uh, I think we have a gift certificate for the winning team uh, or two gift cards for the winners and uh, bragging rights for like several months. <laughs> so it's going to be a great time. We're looking forward to it. Um, all seriousness, though, we're about to open the Word of God, and we're about to look and see what He has for us today. And man, I'm excited about that. That's why we exist. That's what we're here for, uh, to make Him known and to recruit disciples, to uh, baptize them, see them grow, and see them reach others. And uh, we're glad that you're here today. Let's do this. Let's ask the Lord to speak to our hearts today, and then we'll continue in worship. Do pray for Zach and Aaliyah, several in our church, uh, sick Dick and Sue, continue to pray for them, several uh, sick and not feeling well, continue to pray for all them. But worship team, you're doing a great job today. We appreciate you. Uh, let's pray. Father, we love you. We're so grateful for your goodness to us. We're glad to be here today, to be able to fellowship with each other, to be able to worship with each other. And uh, Father, we pray that you would bless today's service. I pray even now that you begin to prepare our hearts for your word. I pray that you'd open my heart uh, to what you have for me today. I pray that as we read your word, as we uh, investigate it, as, as we uh, meditate on it, Father, I pray that you would speak to our hearts in a way that only you can. Uh, we know that we are here uh, to meet with you. That is our heart. And we know that you've promised to meet where we're gathered together. And so, God, we pray that you'd show up today and show off and uh, speak to our hearts. Work in us. And we thank you for your goodness. Thank you for who you are. In uh, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, let's do this. Let's stand to our feet. We'll keep singing here and then we'll jump into the word. <clears throat> All right, if you can join us as we sing God the Uncreated One. God the Uncreated One, the author of salvation, wrote the laws of space and time, and fashioned worlds to him.
Bibles today and uh, turn to Psalm 23. Kids, sixth grade and under can be dismissed. All the kiddos, sixth grade and under can be dismissed. <clears throat> All right. I've misplaced my phone, so nobody call me during the service because I don't know if it's on silent. And uh, after church, um, you can all call me <laughs> and uh, we'll see if we can find that thing. Psalm 23 today. Um, we are uh, now three messages in. This is our third message in Psalm 23. And I don't know about you, but it's been really helpful uh, to me. Matt, you're sitting really close today, man. You just wanted to get up close and personal, didn't you? Get, I, uh, I uh, have really enjoyed being able to uh, walk through this passage together and uh, really just glean some truths that help us in day-to-day -day life. I've gotten a couple calls this week of... Uh, just folks saying, hey, listen, uh, what you spoke about last week or the week before, um, it was something that got put into play this week. And uh, stories of rest and stories of praising God in the middle of storms and stories of uh, thinking about his power and his presence. And uh, man, I am so encouraged to hear that. And uh, I'm so encouraged by this psalm. I would encourage you to do this. We're going to read Psalm 23 together once more, uh, just like we did last week. I would encourage you uh, to do this. Take some time and memorize these verses. It's not a long, lengthy passage of scripture. Uh, if you're anything like me, memorization is a little bit difficult. Here's what I've found helps me. Uh, you guys know index cards, little three by five index cards. I'll take those index cards and I will write a verse out on that index card and I'll take another index card. I'll write the next verse on that and so on and so forth. Six index cards, uh, six verses. And then what I'll do is I'll take um, those cards and uh, when I have a couple free moments during the day, I'll just stick them in my pocket, whatever. I'll just flip through those and uh, just just talk, uh, uh, speak through them. Uh, and try to remember them and eventually as I get a little bit more comfortable maybe I'll keep that card down or um, or I'll hide some words or whatever and uh, listen I believe that you would do well uh, to hide God's word in your heart say amen right there and uh, if there's any bit of God's word that I want hidden in my heart it's Psalm 23 extremely practical extremely helpful and uh, I believe it will be an encouragement uh, to you uh, Dollar Tree sells uh, Index cards, you can get a hundred of them. They have raised their prices now to a dollar twenty-five. I wonder if they're going to change the name of their store to Dollar Twenty-Five Tree Store, right? Uh, but you can go and get a handful of index cards at Dollar Tree. Uh, write those down, and I would encourage you, even after you're done with Psalm 23, uh, write verses that stand out to you, and uh, flip through those, rehearse those, study those, and uh, I believe it will be very helpful. Last week we studied verse number four. Uh, we were reminded that when we are at our darkest, that we can remember that the shepherd is present, right? And he is powerful. Can you say these two words with me? He's present. And he's what? Powerful. Let's do it one more time because not everybody was there. He is present and he's powerful. Good. Uh, I am so thankful to know that. I am so thankful that we can hold uh, to those truths. And uh, this morning we're going to key in on verse number five. But if we could, let's start at verse number one. Let's stretch our legs a little bit more. Stand back up with me and let's read Psalm 23, one to six. You can look in your scripture in front of you uh, or on the screen. And we'll read these verses uh, together. Beginning in verse number one, church, read with me. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord 
forever. Let's pray. We'll jump into our uh, message. Father, speak to our hearts, please. Pray that I'd say nothing I shouldn't, that I'd say everything that I should, and that God, most of all, uh, that you would work in us, that your word and your spirit would do exactly uh, what they've been set out to do. And uh, I pray that we would be open hearers. I pray that we would leave this place not just hearers, but doers. And I pray that we would apply the principles that we'll learn today. I pray that you'd be with the kids in the back. And I pray that you'd help them to have a great time learning about you. We thank you for the opportunity uh, to teach them and invest in them. We thank you for the privilege that that is. I pray that you would be with us in here. Help us to have open uh, ears to your word. I pray that you'd be with the fellowship after as we spend some time just enjoying life together. And uh, we thank you for your good gifts. We thank you most of all for your son, Jesus. And it's in his name we pray. And the church said... Amen. You can be seated there. This morning we're going to turn our attention to verse number 5 in Psalm 23. Let's read that through once more. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. We've looked at resting. Uh, we've looked at renewing. Last week we were challenged to remember. But sometimes in life we just need to reset. We just need to reset. Now, last night our power went out and that wasn't fun, but if you've ever been using your power and your breaker flips, what happens? You have no power, <laughs> right? If your breaker flips, uh, sometimes when we'll use a bunch of crock pots out here, uh, you know it is a good fellowship when we have to keep flipping the breaker because all those crock pots are running, right? You know it's going to be a good one when we have to flip the breaker. Now you have two choices when the breaker's flipped. Either you can go without power, right? Or you can go reset the breaker and continue to use the power, unplug a couple crock pots, right? You have two choices. Uh, I find that often in life, we get to moments where our breaker flips. Everything begins to shut down. And uh, it is healthy for us to recognize that uh, we need to just reset sometimes. And uh, that is the principle I draw from Psalm 23.5. I pray that it will be an encouragement to you. I find three truths in this passage. If we were to break down this verse, we could find three different principles. And I want to key in on those this morning. And uh, then we'll have a great time of fellowship. Um, I went in there and uh, just took a look at the food that was back there. It all passed the eye test. I thought about putting it through the taste test. Uh, but there were a lot of people watching. And I figured Matt might sit really close today. And uh, I did not want to get in trouble before the fun had actually even uh, started. Uh, but we will get to our fellowship time in just a few minutes. But right now, uh, let's key in on uh, these verses. Now, it's funny because verse number five starts with talking about a meal, right? Look at what it says. It says, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Now, how many of you enjoy eating? Raise your hand. <laughs> Matt, raise your hand. You enjoy eating? Okay, yes. Uh, we enjoy it. It's, it's a good time. Uh, I enjoy a feast. I enjoy the ability to choose. And when I think feast, I think a bunch of variety, a bunch of options, a bunch of choices. Uh, I, I love the idea of spending time together. I like the New Testament principle of breaking bread. I like that. It's, it's good. It's healthy. But he says here, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. I don't know about you, but normally when I eat, I enjoy eating with people that I enjoy being around. Can you say amen right there? Uh, I enjoy eating with Beth Ann. I enjoy eating uh, with our church family. I enjoy eating with somebody I'm getting to know. How about eating with your enemies or eating before your enemies? Not really something I endeavor to do, right? Uh, it's not the most fun, right, to eat before your enemies. But I, I want you to see something in this, little, in this little bit of text that I think really stands out. David's enemies are pictured here as standing before him as he feasts. They're observers to his feast. You say, well, that sounds a little bit uh, mean. Watch it, making somebody uh, watch you eat. Listen, the table was prepared for him uh, by the good shepherd. Here's the idea here. 
In this setting, he's saying, you have prepared a table for me of provision in front of my enemies. He's saying, you are showing them that you are able to take care of me and able to provide. And that is on full display in front of those who would wish me harm. Right. Now, how does this look in our daily lives? Well, number one, Satan would love to ruin your life. Amen. Amen. Satan would love to distract you, to discourage you. Uh, let's be honest, he wants to destroy you. And uh, there is nothing better than God putting Satan in his place and saying, listen, this is my child and I have him uh, in care. I am providing for him. I am uh, able to take care of him. Uh, but as we run through life, there are also those in life who wish us harm, right? You ever met anybody that just, they took it a level past, I don't like you, to I wish you harm, right? We could quantify that or qualify them as uh, enemies, somebody who just does not want, uh, uh, does not want our well-being, right? In David's scenario, there were many people in David's life who wished him harm. Think about the different people throughout his life. You think about uh, Saul. Uh, well, let's rewind a little bit. Goliath. Wished him a little bit of harm, right? The Philistines obviously wished David harm. Uh, you fast forward a bit and you've got Saul wishing him harm. Later on, even his son Absalom, his counselor Ahithophel, uh, many people throughout his life. And many had aligned themselves with those people who wished him harm. Uh, to the point that all throughout the Psalms, uh, we see David saying things like, Many are they increased against me, right? He's saying there's a bunch of them. There's a plethora of enemies. I'm not sure on enemies, right? The verse here implies that although our enemies are very real, and uh, it can definitely get discouraging at the thought of that, God will provide for us in the presence of our enemies. When I think about that idea of a table... Uh, we can obviously take the uh, application of a table as it is sitting down and eating a meal. Uh, and I think that is the application of the author here. However, in this passage, he talks over and over about sheep. I saw an application the other day that just stood out to me. And uh, I thought it was a, a great, great application uh, being that this entire passage is talking about shepherding and, and sheep. Uh, in verse number four, uh, the sheep are walking through the valley and they're doing their spring and their summer grazing. Uh, they would have left where they were uh, quartered up, if you will, for winter. And they're headed up uh, to the high ground in the mountains uh, for their summer grazing. Now, in the winter, those uh, hilltops would be largely barren, but in the spring and the summer, uh, they come alive again and the vegetation is just absolutely rich. A uh, table, if you're familiar with uh, geological formations, it's also another word for like a, a mesa or, or a, a tableland, a large flat area uh, that has really steep sides uh, that lower down to uh, the ground level. And what the shepherds would do is they would go to those table lands, and uh, there are actually a few hymns that we sing that talk about the table lands, uh, that flat uh, table like area, the shepherds would go before the sheep to that uh, area and they would prepare it. There would be poisonous weeds and plants and things like that. And the shepherd would pluck them. He would put down uh, salt and minerals for their uh, uh, benefit. He'd lay those down in strategic spots. Uh, why? Because he wanted to, you ready, prepare for the sheep a table, right? I think that definitely uh, when you look in the Hebrew, that word table in this passage is talking about a physical table and a feast and a meal. Uh, but I think this application also is very good uh, that um, the shepherd would provide a table for the sheep. Here, here's my takeaway there. The Lord wants to... Uh, remove things for us that could distract us or destroy us or make us sick spiritually. Whether you realize it or not, God is at work in your life. And understand that God wants you to succeed. 
God wants you to flourish. God wants you to abound. Now listen to me before you go thinking, "Uh uh-oh, that sounds a whole lot like a little bit of prosperity. You sprinkle a little prosperity gospel in there. I didn't say he wants you to be rich, okay? Listen, God does want you to exceed. God does want you to abound. However, I would challenge you with this thought. Success and abounding in God's economy is far different than success and abounding in the economy of the world, right? Amen. Someone might look at you as you're walking a life of faith and they might say, man, they don't look like they're abounding. But as long as you're walking by faith and trusting in him and following his leadership, listen, that is that is what John Tim would describe as an abundant life. Say amen right there. Why? Because we have one that provides for us. You understand that God does a lot of work on your behalf that you never see, that you likely never will see. But understand that he goes before you and he prepares for you. I think about Psalm 139, verse number 16. It says, Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being imperfect. And in thy book all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there were none of them. You ready for this? God knows you before anyone else knows you. Before you were ever formed in your mother's womb. You ready? He knew you. I I was going through some stuff this week and cleaning up. And I am a sentimental person. Uh, Whenever somebody writes me a letter or gives me a card, I keep them. I have a file cabinet full of uh, memories. And on rough days when I don't feel like anybody likes me, I go remember when they used to like me. Right? It's great. Uh, but I, I'm sentimental. I'm going through stuff. And uh, this week I found some pictures and uh, I found a picture of myself when I was six months old. And uh, that's when I used to be cute. And uh, man, I was proud of that picture. I looked at it for a little while. And Sadie comes in and she goes, what's that? And I said, it's a picture. She goes, what's it a picture of? I said, look. She goes, is that Sawyer? I said, no, that's daddy. That's when daddy was a baby. She goes, oh, I like that picture. I'm like, yeah, this is a win, right? She goes, where am I? And I normally am quick to answer. I got it, man. And I'm like, how do I explain this, (laughs) right? And Bethany comes over to save the day. She's like, you know where you were? You were in God's mind. God, when daddy was six months old, before daddy ever met mommy, before mommy was ever born, right? God knew that Sadie Ann Redford would be his child, right? Can I let you in on something? God cares for you. Oh my, he cares for you. You're his child. You serve a God that prepares the way before you. You serve a God that knows you're here. You're going to be here before you ever uh, walk on this earth. He knows the path of your life. He's provided much for you. He's made it safe for you to be there. I want you to think about this. He's provided a way of salvation for you. When we talk about preparing a table before us, think about the Garden of Gethsemane. Think about Pilate's Hall. Think about Calvary. God has provided a way of salvation for you. If you're here today and uh, you say, man, uh, I came because I heard that there's a cornhole tournament and I'm a ringer. So I came today uh, to New Life. Or maybe uh, you're just excited about hamburgers and hot dogs. Or maybe your power went out last night too and you're just here because the room's warm. Whatever the case is, know this, God loves you. And God loves you with an everlasting love. That's hard to comprehend. But before you ever were, He loved you. And as long as you'll ever be, He loves you. It's amazing. You understand, before you were ever born, He was orchestrating a plan of redemption because He knew mankind would fall. He knew man would be alienated away from Himself. And He orchestrated a beautiful plan of redemption. Listen, to send His own Son to die because I'm a sinner. Right? By by the way, understand this. God didn't have any false illusions as to who you'd be. He knew that you'd be born a sinner, right? He knew that you would behave like a sinner, right? By the way, we all do say amen right there. That was not nearly loud enough. We are all sinners. Say amen right there. Husbands and wives look at each other and say amen. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, We are all sinners, right? But knowing that we were sinners, knowing that we were alienated, he sent Jesus 
to die on the cross before any person in this room was ever born, before your parents or grandparents or their grandparents were born. He sent his son to die so that you could have life. Listen, he prepared a table before you. I'm so thankful for that. God wants you to have abundant life. God wants to see you flourish. He wants to see you thrive. How does that happen? <clears throat> Stay under the watchful eye of the shepherd. Follow where he leads you. Listen to him. And uh, you will have that abundant life that John 10 talks about. Look at that next part of the scripture. Uh, in verse number 5 there, it says, What thou anointest my head with oil. Thou anointest my head with oil. Summertime is a uh, miserable time <laughs> for a sheep. There are parasites that really, really enjoy sheep. There are, I, lo I looked this up, I wanted to be able to kind of uh, sound smart. So there are warble flies, there are bot flies. I just thought there were flies. I just didn't even know there were so many flies. But bot flies and heel flies and nose flies and deer flies and black flies and mosquitoes and gnats and others. Here's what they would do. They would fly around the sheep's head. And uh, if you haven't noticed, uh, flies are attracted to moisture. Uh, start sweating and you'll see a bunch of bugs come around you here in Florida. A bunch of gnats, right? Mosquitoes, they're attracted to moisture. And what they would do is they would fly around the sheep's head and they would seek to get inside that sheep's nose. Now, have you ever had something in your nose? That is a miserable feeling, isn't it? Uh, they would fly inside the nose of a sheep, and what they would do is they would burrow into the flesh of the nose of the sheep, and they would cause a, a tremendous amount of irritation, a tremendous amount of inflammation. And so what the sheep would do, and this is a common thing, sheep would uh, go up to trees or rocks and they would just beat their heads against those trees, against those rocks. Why? Because their head hurts so much, right? There are times that sheep will go to lengths that they will actually end up killing themselves just to get respite from that aggravation. And those Sheep will wander around, they will be restless, they'll uh, not graze, they'll lose weight, they'll get sick. Why? Because they're so irritated. They literally cannot think straight, right? So the shepherd, what the shepherd would do is at the very first sign of flies, he would take a, an ointment. It, it's a mixture of linseed oil and, and sulfur and tar, and he would smear it all over the head of the sheep, on the sheep's nose. And uh, they, the, the flies would be turned away from that. Uh, and also, if he had already had some flies that were bothering him, uh, it would calm the pain, and that sheep would again begin to feed. So when it says there, Thou anointest my head with oil, understand we're still talking about the shepherd and the sheep. God says, hey, there are going to be things that bother you, uh, that begin as irritating, that turn to painful, that turn to, I cannot think straight. You ever had things in your life that started at irritating, turned to painful, and uh, escalated to can't think straight? Yeah. I don't know about you, but that's how our emotions tend to work, isn't it? Our emotions can lie to us, right? Our emotions can manipulate truth. And there are times where things in our life happen and irritating and then painful and then cannot think straight. We fixate on the pain and we literally cannot take a step forward because we are in so much agony. When it says here, the shepherd anoints our head with oil, uh, the picture of the Holy Spirit throughout the Bible is oil. I think of the work that the Holy Spirit does in our life to, to calm us, to, to, to comfort us, to uh, work on our behalf. Listen, there are times in our life uh, that we don't know which way is up and which way is down. And God is actively working to provide us peace. The Bible talks about peace that passes all understanding, right? That's the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. 
I don't know about you, but I am thankful for a shepherd that cares enough about me to know the irritation, the pain, the lack of, of clarity that we have sometimes. And he works actively, you ready, to provide peace. Amen. I don't, let me think of how to say this well. I don't think we appreciate peace nearly as much as we ought until we don't have it. You talk about valuable things. Peace is a commodity that you cannot put a price on. And I would encourage you, as long as you're experiencing peace, as long as... And now, here's not what that means. That does not mean, that does not mean life is just gravy. Okay? That does not mean everything's going perfect. That does not mean all is, all is just shiny and glittery and gold, right? What it means is in the midst of the circumstances of life, I find peace, right? What happens? Circumstances, they want to steal your peace. Your emotions, right, want to steal your peace. By the way, listen, your enemy wants to steal your peace. There's something to be said about peace. I'm thankful for a God that provides peace. Thou anointest my head with oil. Listen, some of us, Some of us get to that point in our life, similar to that sheep, where when the pain starts, we will do anything and everything to run away and escape that pain. And it is as futile as that sheep running and bashing his head against a tree or bashing his head against a rock. Listen, what we do oftentimes when we're in pain works so hard against us, it's not even funny. The things we run to, the things we seek, the things that we think will give us satisfaction or peace or, or a little bit of reprieve. Listen, we are often uh, accomplishing just the opposite. Say, Jonathan, what are you talking about? Running to addiction, running to something to numb the pain, running to a relationship that we think will give us satisfaction, running to, listen, God alone provides true peace. I would encourage you when you're hurting, when you're irritated, when you're painful, uh, or when you're in pain, uh, when you have no clarity, when you can't think straight, run to the shepherd. Get close to the shepherd. You ready for this? Because he has the oil. Because he has the oil. Psalm 68, 19 says, Blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth us up with benefits, even the God of our salvation, Selah. Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you, what's the word there? That's a good word. Philippians 4, 6, and 7, Be careful or anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, and the, what's the word? Peace, that's another good word, amen, of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Psalm 55, 22, cast thy burden upon the Lord and he shall, what's the word? Sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Can I tell you this? Nothing happens to you that takes God by surprise. Amen. There's nothing. There's nothing. And the irritants and the pains of life can only be solved by the peace that He provides. You say, well, where do I get that peace? It's a great question. Run to Him. He's got the stuff. <laughs> Run to Him. He's got the stuff. Amen. Look at that last part of this verse. This is good. My cup runneth over. My cup runneth over. What does that mean? This abundance. It's abundance. It's, it's abundance. John 10, if you want to take your Bibles there, we'll have it on the screen, but I'd encourage you to flip over there. Probably a good place to stick a marker in your Bible and uh, go back and look at it later. John 10, verse number 1, and uh, we'll look through verse number 11. John 10, 1 uh, through 11. The Bible says this, Verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. 
But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. When he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them. The shepherd leads them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find a pasture. The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have, what's the word? Life. And that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. They did not understand in this moment what he was saying. I think there were a lot of messages that he preached that resonated with them after he died, was buried, and resurrected. I think a lot of these, these uh, parables that he gave them, a lot of the truths that he gave them, they, they, they could not understand, but they came to understand in a very heartbreaking way. But Jesus here says, listen, I am the sheep, or I'm the shepherd, I am the door. He says, I am what he would later say in John. He says, what? I am the way, right? I am the way. Can I tell you this morning, there are two voices calling for your attention. There's the voice of the thief, the one who wants to rob, the one who wants to kill. There's the voice of the shepherd, which voice are you heeding? Which voice are you listening to? Are you listening to the one that will steal your peace? Are you, the one, are, you, listen, are you listening to the one that promises you peace but brings nothing but suffering? It, it, here's what we forget sometimes. Satan appears as an angel of lie. Satan loves to counterfeit the work of God. Satan loves to counterfeit the work of God. Satan loves to distract the people of God from the work of God. Satan loves to pervert and to twist what God has said. Satan is an agent of chaos. And he actively wants to hinder you. He wants to hurt you. Hey, listen, he wants to annihilate you. By the way, he wants to annihilate your family. And if you think he's not actively against you, then you've not read the Bible. Because the Bible tells us that he is actively trying to do these things. He is seeking whom he may devour. Absolutely. You say, well, I'm, I'm just not that big of a deal. You're a big deal to God, and that makes you a big deal to him. Abundant life is what every shepherd once for his sheep. But if we're really honest, we settle for adequate life. Abundant life is what the shepherd wants for his sheep, but we settle for adequate. Some of us are settling for much, much less than God has promised. You say, well, why, why settle? It's easier. It's easier more commonplace. I wonder how many Christians are actually living abundant lives. I, I love the hymns. I love, uh, man, I, I really love our worship team. I so appreciate uh, Steve and all the work he puts in that. My wife, Emmy, and just everybody up here that just does a great job. I, I appreciate them leading us in worship because there's just something about singing truths. There's something about that that helps us remember great truths. They, they shape our thinking. 
Uh, by the way, what you listen to affects the way you think. Amen. What you watch, what you see, what, what comes in, it affects the way that you think. There's a song that I absolutely love. It's the song, Great is Thy Faithfulness. How many of you are familiar with that song? The last verse of Great is Thy Faithfulness says this. Pardon for sin and a peace that endureth. Thy own dear presence to cheer and to guide. Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings all mine with 10,000 beside. Goes on to sing that chorus. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. And can I say that's the way the shepherd gives to the sheep. That's the way the Lord gives to us generously, abundantly, and overflowing. That song is based on Lamentations chapter number 3, verse number 21 to 24. I, I love this passage. I specifically love verse 21 uh, because it really just lays it out there. It says, this I recall to my mind. Therefore, I have what's the word? Hope. Hope is an extremely valuable thing as well. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I, the word, hope, hope in him. There's an abundance of provision. There's fresh, still waters. There's reprieve from irritants. There's protection from storms and predators. And that's why the psalmist can say, my cup runneth over. Stephen, would you come and uh, play for us? How many of you believe what I said today to be true? Amen. You say, I believe it was biblical. You agree? Amen. One verse is chock full of so much truth. But here's the problem. We often, I have something in my eye. I'm very sorry to keep picking at my eye, but my contact is wanting to pop out or something and it's really bugging me. I, I apologize uh, for that. Sometimes we know truth, but when the rubber meets the road and it's time to live in truth, sometimes we shy away. And maybe it's that we're too proud to humble ourselves to truth. Maybe it's that we're afraid to submit ourselves to truth. Maybe we're just, maybe we're just forgetful. <laughs> and, and to be very, very honest, if you don't practice submitting to truth and walking in truth, it is very easy to get forgetful. It is, it is very easy to be overwhelmed. It is very easy to be overloaded. And it is very easy to give in under the burden of all of that. See, there's a difference in knowing truth and living in truth. So, so what are some truths that we've learned in Psalm 23, specifically in verse number five. What are some truths that we found out? Number one, he'll provide for us. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. By the way, there's no weapon formed against you that can prosper. Amen. God has you. You are his. There is nothing that can happen to you outside of his allowing it to happen. You say, well, Jonathan, what's that mean? It means the Bible says in James, I believe it's chapter four, there's no temptation, but such as is common to man. But God with the temptation also provides a way of escape. You're wondering what version that was. That's the Jonathan paraphrase version. J.P.V. Right there. That's what that was. <laughs> 
He's told us, listen, he's not going to put anything in our way that he does not give us an escape. You say, well, where's the escape? I'm looking everywhere. You ready? The shepherd. Jonathan, I feel like I'm just, I'm, 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 I'm on a bus and the brakes are gone. And I am just, I am just running to my destiny with no way to stop it. And I'm looking for exits everywhere. Listen, look to the shepherd. Amen. Remember what we said earlier? He's got the stuff. Yeah. God's a God of, number one, provision. Can you say provision this morning? But notice, notice secondly in that passage, just in recap, thou anointest my head with oil. Listen, he gives us the Holy Spirit. If you're a child of God, the Holy Spirit lives inside of you and there is no irritant. There is no pain. There is nothing that can consume you if you will look to him and trust in his spirit. But let's be blunt. That is stinking easy to preach. It's hard to practice. It's hard to practice. Oh, 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 but it is possible. But it is possible. Look, look, lastly, at that end part of the text, verse number five, my cup runneth over. Here's what often happens to us. We get going and life gets going and we get overwhelmed and we cave into the pressure instead of remembering who he is remembering what he's done listen as lamentation said when i recall to my mind his faithfulness i can have hope the lord's my portion therefore will i what hope in him you say jonathan what do i do let's just simplify it follow the shepherd Jonathan, where's he at? He's in his word. He's in his word. But Jonathan, where's he at? He's promised to hear your prayers. He's on the right hand of the Father making intercession for you. He's available at any time. Say, Jonathan, where's he at? The Holy Spirit indwells the life of every believer. If you're a child of God, he lives inside of you. What do I do? Follow the shepherd. Jonathan, I can't see him from where I'm at. Follow the, oh, follow the sound of his voice. My sheep, what? Know my voice. Follow his voice. Follow his voice. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end sometimes things don't go the way we want them to let's 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 adjust sometimes to oftentimes things don't go the way we want them to sometimes the the path that god allows us to travel is is dark and difficult sometimes it seems nonsensical that's okay just remember he is way ahead of us if you've ever come to me for direction or anything, you've said, Jonathan, what do I do in this scenario? It is likely that I've given you these two verses, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Would you read them with me? They're on the screen there. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Jonathan, I don't know what to do. I want him to direct my paths. What do I do? Follow the plan. You, you want the provision, follow the plan. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways, what? Acknowledge him. And he will direct your paths. Listen to his voice. Father, I pray that you'd speak to our hearts today. You know exactly where we, what we need. You know exactly where we are. And Father, I pray that you'd accomplish something in our hearts of lasting effect. We thank you for who you are and for your goodness to us. I ask you if there's one here today that doesn't know you as Savior, that they'd be honest. That they'd say, all those things sound great. I want 
His leading me. I want His providing for me. I, I want Him to take care of me, but I'm not His child. Help them to understand that today they can become His child. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes for just a moment? I want to ask you just briefly two questions. Rather simple questions, but oh so important. Uh, question number one. If you were to die today, do you know that you'd spend eternity with God? Are you His child? Have you placed your faith in Him? Do you know for certain that He knows you? If you'd say, Jonathan, I'm a child of God. I have believed by faith. I know He saved me by His grace. And I know I'm a child of God. If you're in this room and you say, that's me, slip your hand up all over this room, all over this room, all over this room. You can put your hands down. Can we get real? Can we be honest here? If you'd say, Jonathan, if I'm being real, if I'm being honest, if I died today, I don't know where I'd spend eternity. I don't know that I'm a child of God and that concerns me and I'd like you to pray for me today. I'm not embarrassed you, I'm not call you out, but all across this room, if you say, Jonathan, that's me. If I died today, I don't know that heaven would be my home. That concerns me. That concerns me. Would you slip your hand up all across the room? See that hand, anyone else, anyone else that would be so honest as to say, that's me, that's where I'm at. You can put your hand down. Thank you for your honesty and transparency. Sir, I'd tell you this, I'd tell you he loved you before you were ever born. And he orchestrated a plan of redemption. He sent his son to die because he knew that you'd be a sinner. He knew that you'd need a savior. And so God himself came and was born of a virgin, lived a perfect life, was beaten and mocked and scorned, nailed to the tree. His perfect blood was shed. And all because he loved you. Legitimately, he loved you. The Bible says in John 3, for God so loved the world. When I read that, I think of myself, God loved Jonathan. God loves you. So much that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever you ready believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. A lot of people complicate salvation. Many religions will say, you have to work for it or you have to do this or you have to not do that. The Bible says salvation is by grace, God's goodness. It's nothing that you deserve, but he offers it to you. He said, if you'll believe by faith, he'll save you. Man, I would encourage you. You've probably made a lot of decisions in your life, maybe some good, maybe some bad. But know this, the greatest decision you can ever make is to say, God, I believe you died for me. I believe you love me. And as best as I know how, I place my faith in you. I, I'm asking you to save me. It's the greatest decision you'll ever make. I would encourage you with this. We're going to be around. We're going to be spending some time together. If you'd like to talk to somebody today, know for sure how that works and know for sure how you can uh, place your faith in Christ. I can set you up with somebody today. You come to me after the service and say, Jonathan, I'd like to talk to somebody about salvation. And I promise you there's a dozen people here that would love to sit down and talk to you and explain how you can know for sure that heaven would be your home. Talk about hope. That's the greatest hope there is. Say amen right there, church. Amen. Would you stand to your feet? Everybody looking up here real quick. So each week I give us homework, right? Last week our, our, our homework. Uh, this week we have some homework. Uh, I would encourage you with your homework this week. You ready? All right. Everybody here? Listen to his voice. Jonathan, what's that look back like? Getting his word. Jonathan, what's that look like? Spend some time in prayer with him. Well, what's it look like asking his spirit to speak to your heart? And I, I tell you, man, if you'll follow him, he'll lead you. And by the way, some leaders may have failed you in life. Authority figures may have disappointed you. He'll never fail you. He'll never fail you. His way is a good way. Father, I love you. I praise you for your goodness. Thank you for who you are, for all you've done for us. I pray that you be glorified for this one that raised their hand, said they don't know you as Savior. I pray that today would be the day that they place their faith in you, that they begin a relationship with you, that they be able to have that hope. We thank you and praise you for your goodness, for who you are. We ask you to be with us and guide us in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, let me give you just a few announcements. 
and then you can go on your way. On the way out the door, we've got several sign-up sheets. We have got the uh, Cornhole Tournament sign-up sheet, and I would encourage you to sign up for that. It's going to be an awesome time. We're really looking forward to it. We've got a, a Super Bowl Fellowship sign-up sheet, and I would encourage you to sign up for that. Uh, we also have a member interest sign-up sheet. If you're interested in becoming a member of New Life, uh, you can sign up there. Uh, we have the devotionals that we have been uh uh, given out, they are 90 day devotionals. Uh, the cost of those books was $10. If you can't afford it, uh, we'll take care of that for you. We want to encourage you devote yourself to God's Word, and uh, it'll be a great thing for you. The Super Bowl Fellowship is uh, Super Bowl Sunday night, the 13th, after the service, and we'll just ask you to bring along some uh, appetizers, some finger foods. We'll have a great time. Vision Sunday, February 6th. Uh, I have some exciting things uh, for this next year that the Lord's laid on our hearts and excited to share with those with you. Uh, February 6th, be here. Uh, be in your place. Ladies, uh, Bible study, first and third Thursday of each month, and uh, we'll have a great time. Uh, we will not have a great time. The ladies will have a great time. Uh, if you uh, have not filled out one of your secret sister uh, questionnaires or don't know what that is, Charlotte, raise your hand there. See Charlotte. Uh, she can answer your questions. We have some of those at the Welcome Center. I love you. Uh, I need your help with just a couple logistical things real quick. And Stephen, you can actually stop playing for a minute. Give your hand a break if you want. Uh, he's dying over there. Um, yes, Charlotte. We have a meeting with the children's parents. Any children uh, of junior church kids, if we could have you meet, uh, we'll have you meet in uh, the fellowship room there. And uh, if you could meet where they normally teach, uh, we're just going to have a, a, a brief meeting there with you. Uh, we are going to have the afternoon fellowship. We've got to move a couple things along because we're going to do that. So if you are able to help us stack chairs, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to stack all the chairs on the last two chairs exactly where they are. We don't want to move them to the wall because then I lose where they are. We want to leave them where they are, move everything to it. We'll stack those two chairs. If you can't physically help do that, that is no problem at all. But what we'd ask you to do is go ahead and move to the fellowship hall or move somewhere so that we can stack those chairs, get ready. Uh, burgers and dogs will start coming out here in 15 minutes or so. Uh, there's other food in there. We will wait until that meeting is over, until we have the chairs stacked and things like that to eat. So I just encourage you to mingle around, get some coffee if you want some coffee, spend some time chatting, and then we will um, get together in just a little bit. Sound good? Everybody good? Everybody understand the instructions? All right. And by the way, uh, the next rule is just have fun. Have a good time. Uh, let your hair down a little bit. It's going to be a fun day. You say, well, I wasn't prepared. I didn't bring anything. We don't care. Stay. Enjoy it. We've got plenty of food. I think we're cooking like 700 hot dogs and hamburgers. It's going to be a great day. Stephen, lead us in that last song. And thanks for playing for so long there for All right. us. All right. Let's sing God the Uncreated One. God the Uncreated
mighty God in mortal flesh, forsaken by a traitor's kiss, the curse of sin and sensual. to help with the chairs. <laughs> 